At AP, we're fortunate to view some fantastic pictures every year, and we publish quite a lot of them in the magazine and on our website. So at the end of the year, we always ask the AP team to pick the image which for them has been the outstanding image of the year. And here is this year's roundup of the team's picks of images of the year. We're gonna start with this fantastic picture called Flooded Cave by Martin Brown, and it was chosen by our features editor, Amy Davis. This completely surreal image is very eye-catching. I think once you've seen it, you don't forget it. Martin took it at one of the biggest flooded cave systems in the world at the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. And it's easy to see why it won the International Landscape Photographer of the Year prize earlier this year. Martin shot the picture on the Sony A7R Mark III with the eight to 15 millimeter lens. And he shot it at a 20th of a second at F4.5 at ISO 6400. Our next picture was chosen by our deputy online editor, Jessica Miller, and it's a picture from Wildlife Photographer of the Year. It's an incredible shot by Bertie Gregory of Wales taken on a drone. Now, Bertie Gregory has been entering the competition since he was 15, and this year is the first time that he's won an award, but what a picture it is. He got first place in the Behaviour Mammals category for an image entitled Whales Making Waves. He was fortunate enough to embark on a two month long expedition searching for orcas. This group specialise in hunting seals by wave washing, which means charging towards the ice and creating a wave that washes the seal into the water. When I spoke to Bertie, he told me that this was one of the very few still images he took on the occasion as he was there to shoot film. The composition and framing of the photo is so well executed and presents each whale perfectly lined up to make their wave. There's so much detail in the image from the seal to the individual bubbles from the whales. As soon as Jess saw this within the exhibition, she said it reminded her of scenes from wildlife documentaries that she had watched and is one of the spectacles that's always impressed her. You can see Bertie's photograph and more of the winning images at the Wildlife Photographer of the Year exhibition at the Natural History Museum until the 30th of June, 2024. So do go along, we highly recommend this exhibition. It's one of the best you'll find in London. Our next image was chosen by Musa Buonali on our content team. And it's an image from the Sony World Photography Awards called Slam on the Brakes by Zen Wan Zhu. It won the motion category in the open competition at this year's awards. Not only is it very, very striking in its vivid colors, but Zen Wan captured the action of the horse and its rider in a way that leaves you intrigued. It's an image you can't forget. According to Zen Wan, barrel racing is a competition where cowgirls ride quickly around barrels. The one that does this in the shortest time wins. Every time a horse reaches a barrel, it needs to brake sharply, turn around the barrel, and then race to the next one. The whole race is exciting, especially at the turns. Zen One shot this picture on the Canon EOS 5D Mark IV with an EF 16 to 35 mm f2.8 lens. Our next choice is by our online writer Isabel Rafati and it's called TikTok by Philippa James and it's from the Taylor Wessing Portrait Prize. TikTok is one of three of James's photos to be part of the Taylor Wessing Portrait Prize this year, which is exhibited at the National Portrait Gallery. It's from her series, No Big Deal, which addresses the sexism and sexual harassment faced by young girls. And it encapsulates the prominent role that social media has in girlhood today, and the degree to which we experience life through our phones. What caught Isabella's eye about this photo was how the composition was used to highlight the interconnectedness between the trio of girls and their phones. While one girl stands in the middle, staring into the camera, completely in focus, while everything around her is blurred. The photo not only works as part of a series of moments between the girls, but easily stands alone by itself as well, hinting at a larger narrative and leaving you wondering what the girls are saying at their phones and what has made the girl in the middle turn away. You can see Philippa's photo and more at the Taylor Wessing Portrait Prize exhibition, which is on at the National Portrait Gallery until the 25th of February. Our technical editor, Andy Westlake, chose a photo from our Amateur Photographer of the Year competition taken by Tommaso Carrera, and it's called Sunbathing Cat. This fabulous photo came second in our street photography round earlier this year. 
Tommaso has expertly balanced light and shade while producing a geometrically perfect composition, but more importantly, he's captured the very essence of felinity with a cat languidly sunbathing in a small patch of light. I doubt there's any cat owner anywhere who doesn't recognise immediately this kind of behaviour. Andy speculated that his choice may upset one or two people because one of the unspoken rules of street photography is that it should concern people going about their daily lives. But rules are meant to be broken, he says, and if you can't photograph cats while wandering the streets with your camera, then what exactly is the point in life? Tommaso took the picture using a Leica Q2 with the 28mm lens. Our next image was chosen by our technique editor Holly Latham Hucker and it's from this year's Landscape Photographer of the Year competition. It's called Winter Content by Daniel Ruffles. It's a snowy scene taken in Alderburgh, Suffolk by Landscape Photographer Daniel Ruffles. As he explains, it's unusual to get snow on the East Anglia coast. Suffolk is a well photographed county and seeing something a bit different can make all the difference when entering a competition. Clearly the judges at El Potty thought so too as it won the coast category in this year's contest. Holly liked this picture because she thought it'd be the perfect opportunity to showcase snow in our Christmas issue, but it's also an outstanding image. The muted tones of the colourful seaside houses as they disappear into the distance with the falling snow give the scene a beautiful painterly quality and the placement of the boat and the space in the upper two thirds of the frame balance out this composition perfectly. Daniel shot the picture using a Fujifilm X Pro 1 with a 35mm lens. And you can see this photograph and more at the Landscape Photographer of the Year exhibition, which is touring the UK until the 4th of May. Links to where you can see this exhibition and all of the photographs in this video can be found in the description below. Our next choice is by AP's deputy editor, Jeff Harris, and it's a photograph that he saw at the Photo Froome uh, festival earlier this year in Froome, Somerset. It's a beguiling and adorable image, and one of the reasons it stayed in Jeff's mind is that as a keen travel photographer, he knows how hard it is to get locals to be themselves, particularly young kids. In this image, Yamily looks very self-composed, and you can sense her strong personality. Nothing is more natural to her than walking around with a helmet and climbing gear. There's something wise and ageless about her expression too. And a really nice composition, really nice colours, and overall a really great travel portrait. Finally, for my image of the year, I've chosen something very different. I can't really call it a favourite picture because it is really not a very happy subject, but it's a picture that stayed with me for reasons I'll explain. It's by Magnum photographer Ian Berry and it's from his book Water, which came out this year, which is a project 15 years in the making, recording the effects of water around the world and how it affects different communities. It's all shot in black and white and this image was taken in Bangladesh. Now, water is the single most important resource on the planet and I find it a travesty that in a world with so much wealth, so many people die every year due to having either not enough of it or too much of it. So Ian's book was a great interest to me. And also as I spent most of my youth living on working on ships, this particular image resonated because it's what happens to ships when they're no longer of any use to society. They're taken to breakers yards like this one in Bangladesh where they're dismantled by men and boys literally with their bare hands. Nobody in the West will touch these ships because they are full of asbestos and other hazardous materials, but these workers are sent in barefoot with no protective clothing to spend their days doing backbreaking work amongst the twisted metal of these rusting hulks. The industrial accident rate must be colossal, and if they manage to avoid injury, then they've got asbestosis to look forward to. Berry is an old school Magnum photojournalist invited to join Magnum by Henri Cartier-Bresson personally, so he has the a very classic style of black and white photojournalism. So his book, if you like that kind of thing, is well worth looking at. And some of the stories of the pictures that he takes in that book are very shocking and, and upsetting and frankly, 
um, quite disturbing, but I think they're stories that need to be told and Ian Berry tells them very well. The book Water by Ian Berry is published by Ghost Books and is available now. Contributor Peter Dench has chosen an image by Peter Caton, which was taken for the charity Action Against Hunger. It's an image from South Sudan and is part of an exhibition called Unyielding Floods Restoring Hope that was on show at the OXO Tower earlier this year and received almost 4,500 visitors. His choice of using what could be considered an impractical combination of digital Hasselblad and Elinchrom flashheads has borne dividends here. The large-scale image of Nyalong and Nyamel pings with critical detail, bringing them face to face with an international audience. It's an image that illustrates how communities are adapting to the changing climate, demonstrating resilience and hope in the face of destruction and despair. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and do leave your comments below. Tell us which of these pictures was your favorite, or if you have a different favorite that we haven't featured, which you probably do, maybe post the link to that so we can check out which pictures you like best this year. And if you want to see more of these pictures, look in the description and you'll find links to all the exhibitions where you can come and see them.